Hello, hello. I hope you're doing well today. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, thank you for joining me. I'm really looking forward to talking to you today about five ways that you can hack your unconscious mind for more calm and confidence. You know, I was just thinking when I was preparing for this episode, you know, there are so many tricks and tools and insights that I've been able to uh, have access to doing this work that we can all use in our day-to-day lives. And we're not really taught how to, how to do this. And yet the unconscious mind is so important. I'm going to explain all about that. And the simple things that you can do to hack your unconscious, to get your unconscious mind on your side and working for you rather than working against you. And so just before we get into that, to let you know that I have free resources for anxiety over on my website. You can download my free high functioning anxiety workbook over at karma hyphen you.com if you just go to the home page you'll see it right there right at the top and that will give you a workbook to help you to really figure out what's holding you back in terms of high functioning anxiety and what the most important step that you need to take is for you to really move things forwards so to get that free resource head over to karma you.com and enter your email address and i'll send you that free workbook so the unconscious mind. Now, so it's, it's a strange thing because it's almost like a bit of a con- it's a concept rather than a place. You know, sometimes people say to me, "Can you locate the unconscious mind in the brain?" Unfortunately, not. It's not really that simple. When we're talking about the unconscious mind, we're talking about the mind that is responsible for ninety five percent of your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviors, and your habits. These originate in your subconscious mind. And you'll hear me use the word unconscious or subconscious interchangeably. It means the same thing. And it basically means the the thoughts, the feelings, behaviors, and habits that we do not consciously have control over. So just let that sink in for a moment that actually 95% of what's going on with you (laughs) is kind of outside of your conscious control. It's not within your conscious control. So have you ever felt that you wanted to make a change? Say you wanted to start exercising or you wanted to be kinder to yourself. And it almost doesn't matter how many times you tell yourself, be kinder to yourself or, you know, start booking for that gym class. There's something blocking you. And There's something deeper at play that is stopping you from being able to make that change. And it might even be, you know, you're you're in the supermarket and you're trying to be healthy (laughs) and yet you find yourself drifting over to the ice cream aisle and putting some sweet treats into your basket. Nothing really wrong with that. But if you had the intention to not do that, that is potentially your unconscious mind kind of ruling the show the unconscious mind and the the conscious idea that we want to be healthy maybe doesn't get a look in because there are subconscious forces at play that are really running the show. Now, your unconscious mind is incredibly powerful. It is controlling all of the functions of your body, your heart beating, your digestion, the automatic thoughts that bubble up in your mind, the automatic feelings You know, when you suddenly find yourself getting triggered by something somebody says and you get this rush of emotion or you answer back to someone very quickly and impulsively, that's the unconscious mind. If you think about your daily habits, the things that you do without thinking about them, that's the unconscious mind. When you think about the way that you behave, whether that's in, at work, you know, keeping your ideas to yourself, whether that is in relationships the feelings of, I don't know, for example, neediness or uh, checking up on your partner, for example, or people pleasing, all these things are subconscious. And of course, a lot of anxiety is also unconscious. We don't decide to feel anxious. We don't think to ourselves, today is a great day to have a panic attack. I'm going to have a panic attack after this uh, 
lunchtime meeting. No one decides that. It is a subconscious process. And what's happening with anxiety is we're having the thoughts, maybe worries that feel out of control, physical sensations, adrenaline, stomach tight, churning, sweating, breathing differently, all these things, unconscious mind. Thank you, unconscious. <laughs> for, for, you know, it can be our worst enemy in, in a lot of cases, but it, that means it can also be our best friend if we learn how to, to harness it. If you're not hacking your unconscious mind, you are seriously missing out. So I really want to remind you that, or I guess kind of reassure you that if you've tried things in the past, like you've tried things to help with anxiety or to work on your confidence and it hasn't worked, it hasn't stuck, then it's absolutely not your fault because you have been battling against the very, very powerful subconscious mind and all of its programming and all of its automatic processes that are kind of running the show. So it's not your fault if you tried to change in the past and haven't found that you've been able to. So we really don't want to be leaving our unconscious mind up to chance and just letting it run the show however it wants. Because, I mean, the mind is much more complex than any computer, but sometimes it can be useful to think about the unconscious mind as being like a vast computer where we store all of these programs that are running the show. So you might have a program that's running in the background, that's creating the inner critic and causing you to beat yourself up about things. And much of our unconscious programming gets programmed in in childhood. So when we're young, it's thought before the age of eight, we're most receptive to things that we're told, things that we see, things that are mum and dad say to us, things that happen at school. And we are in download mode. We're just absorbing all of these messages, all of this programming. And it gets kind of like hardwired in, or wired in at least, to the unconscious mind. And of course, we need that ability. It enables us to learn huge amounts as children. And yet, some of what we're learning is not that useful or that relevant, or perhaps the things that you learned when you were six years old don't apply to you or aren't so useful when you're 36 or 46 or whatever age you might be. And very often we're we're creating these coping strategies when we're younger. Coping strategies to help us to deal with whatever was happening at the time. So, you know, I don't know what's gone on in your life. You might have had a really privileged childhood, you might have had a very traumatic time growing up. Either way, the person with the most, you know, quote unquote, perfect childhood is still going to have some stuff that wasn't ideal, that, that is perhaps not serving them, that they've taken on board as children. And these coping strategies that we create can stay with us for a lifetime if they're left unchecked. So I'll give you an example of this. Say as a child, you learned to be clingy because you didn't get enough love. Now, this is a really common one. And you use that same pattern. You have that same program running in the background of your mind as an adult. And that shows up in relationships. Or maybe you learned as a coping strategy to stay really busy, to always be occupying yourself to always be on the go and constantly being productive because as a child, you used staying busy and and being helpful or productive as a way to not have to feel things because things were painful when you were a child. And so you learn to stay busy and productive. Maybe you learned that from a parent, you saw them doing that and you, you know, downloaded that as your coping strategy. And yet, you know, as an adult, you find yourself feeling numb, feeling burnt out and not really knowing how to process your feelings because you've got this old strategy, this old coping strategy that is playing in the background in your unconscious mind. And as a hypnotherapist of 11 years, I've seen these types of things over and over and over again. And yeah, I invite you to reflect on what is your 
you know, what was that programming that you took on board as a child? What was it that you learned to do that maybe made, and actually very often made perfect sense as a child? And actually it was useful. It was what you needed to do to survive or to cope with what was going on at the time. But as an adult, you have so many more resources and abilities and you have more choices and the situation has changed. And actually that old coping strategy is no longer serving you anymore. It's no longer relevant. It's not helping you anymore. And so I'm going to share my five ways to hack your unconscious mind for more calm and confidence, or in fact, any change that you would like to make. And these are things that I use within my hypnotherapy, my courses, my hypnotherapy downloads, but they are also things that anyone can do and incorporate into their lives and yeah, learn how to do and take control of your unconscious or more control. I'm not saying you're going to have complete control, but more control would be nice, wouldn't it? So number one is visualization. Now we have a saying, we hypnotherapists have a saying, the imagination is the language of the subconscious mind and how we use our imagination has the power to send a message to the unconscious mind uh, for good or bad. And I'll talk about that a bit more in a moment. And it's a tool that I'm nearly always using within hypnotherapy. Now, what's interesting about your imagination, and you will definitely have experienced this, is that your body doesn't know the difference between something that you vividly imagine and something that's happening for real. So Let's try something for a minute. Assuming you're not driving right now, obviously don't close your eyes if you're driving, but if you're, if it's safe to do that, so I invite you to close your eyes for just a couple of minutes, maybe even just a minute. And I'd like you to imagine a big, juicy lemon. Now, roll it between your hands, feel its texture, see its colour, hold it up to your nose, give it a good sniff, Smell all those delicious, zesty, lemony scents. And next, I'd like you to imagine putting the lemon onto a chopping board and with a sharp knife, slicing the lemon in two. Perhaps you can see the juice squirting out as you slice it. Now, I'd like you to take a piece of lemon and bring it to your mouth, squeezing in some of that juice. Now, what do you notice? Maybe your mouth started to water. Maybe you even winced at the anticipation of the sour taste of lemon. This is your imagination at work, creating an experience that your unconscious mind interprets as real. So your body may have responded to this. You may have really started to smell that lemon or taste it, feel it in your mouth, feel your mouth start to water. This is the power of your imagination and the power of your unconscious mind. And we can use visualization to create these imagined experiences and practice feeling more calm and confident in situations. So examples of how I might use this in myself or with clients would be imagining yourself In a situation where in the past you may have felt lacking in confidence or nervous, afraid, anxious, and instead imagining yourself feeling calm and confident and safe in that situation. So maybe it's when you're setting a boundary with a family member or when you're speaking in public or speaking up in a meeting. You can use visualization as the language of our subconscious to send a message to the unconscious mind and to create a change. Because remember, the unconscious doesn't know the difference between a real and an imagined experience. And so, yeah, other ways that we might use this could be changing our self-image, changing the way that we see ourselves. Um, It could be about changing the way we think about the future. So if you're somebody that often imagines the worst or thinks about all the what ifs or your mind goes to the worst case scenario, we can really be using our imagination to expect the best and retrain and hack the unconscious 
mind to think about things differently. So number two is affirmations. Now, I'm going to go ahead and bet (laughs) that you have been telling yourself negative affirmations for many, many years. I bet, because most of us do, (laughs) that you've been saying negative things to yourself, beating yourself up about things, telling yourself you're not good enough, all that horrible stuff for many, many years. And the effect of doing that can be that we feel like we're not good enough or that we lack in confidence, that we feel afraid and don't trust ourselves. Now, repetition is one of the ways that we can use to change our unconscious mind, to change our unconscious thought patterns. And, you know, in in other types of therapy, this is used. So for example, in cognitive behavioral therapy, you know, you'll use repetition to start to change your way of thinking and change your thought patterns. And affirmations are just a really interesting way that we can be changing our internal dialogue, changing the way that we speak to ourselves and starting to create those new neural pathways, those new ways of thinking about ourselves and the world through that repetition. So instead of telling yourself negative things, you may as well (laughs) give it a go and start to tell yourself some positive things instead. Because quite frankly, it's more than likely that the the way that you've been doing things hasn't been working for you. So why not? Why not try something else? So how can we get started with affirmations? You can either write down your own positive statements, things that you'd like to believe, things that you'd like to say to yourself that are positive and kind and encouraging. You can listen to a recording. I've got a free one that you can download from my website for confidence that is designed to help you to speak to yourself with more kindness, to trust yourself more, to to feel more confident in work and life. And so you can download that for free. It's at my website, karma-u.com forward slash confidence. So it's karma-u.com forward slash confidence. And yeah, you can download that pop it on your phone, repeat daily for a couple of weeks and notice how your self-talk starts to change. So number three, when it comes to how we can hack the unconscious mind is to recalibrate your unconscious mind with exposure therapy. So what I mean by exposure therapy is, and it sounds a little bit scary, but, (laughs) and it is slightly scary to be honest, Exposure therapy is where we, in a very step-by-step way, go and face our fears. And it's a way to teach your body, your nervous system, and your unconscious mind that something that you may have been afraid to do in the past is not actually dangerous. It's not actually a life or death situation. Because that's really what's going on at an unconscious level. If you're scared of elevators, if you're scared of dogs or public speaking, your unconscious mind is believing that if you go and get on stage or you go near a dog or you get in a lift, that you're going to be at risk, that it's a life or death situation. That's why your nervous system is creating all of those hormones, adrenaline and cortisol to create that feeling of fear and anxiety. Now, what we do when we go through this process of exposure therapy as we take ourselves into the situation that we're afraid of. And instead of running away or avoiding, we stay with it. We stay with any feelings of adrenaline, any anxiety. And in doing so, we retrain our unconscious mind that we are not at risk, that we do not die. that we survive and maybe even quite enjoy, perhaps, depending on the situation, whatever it is that we have been afraid of. And it's a way of recalibrating your nervous system and changing how your unconscious mind thinks about that situation. And so this might be something that you do with a therapist. If you've got a very severe phobia, for example, it might be something that you would do with professional help. 
But it's what I did with my fear of public speaking. I used to be really terrified of public speaking, getting nervous for weeks beforehand, like (laughs) terrible nerves and anxiety. And I slowly and steadily recalibrated my nervous system by meeting up with one person for a coffee and teaching my unconscious mind, hang on, this is actually quite fun. I didn't die. I, I got through it and it actually went quite well. Then doing talks in front of very small numbers of people, building up to more and more people and and different situations, to going on live radio, to being on podcasts listened to by hundreds of thousands of people. And I did that in a step-by-step way by recalibrating my nervous system and my unconscious mind. It's also something that we'll very often do within hypnotherapy. So if you don't want to go and speak in public or you haven't got those opportunities, for example, we can do this within hypnotherapy using the imagination to recalibrate our nervous system and our unconscious to feel safe and confident and calm in those situations. So number four is hypnotherapy. I obviously had to include this because it is my speciality (laughs) and hypnotherapy is it's kind of the ultimate way to hack your unconscious mind. Now, during a hypnotherapy session, you get yourself uh, or you find yourself getting into a deep state where the unconscious mind becomes open and receptive to being able to make changes, to being able to take on board positive suggestions. And I like to think about it almost like getting ourselves back into that download mode that we were in as young children, whereby we suddenly can absorb and take on board and make changes. The the things that we want to change, the things that we want to let go of can be let go of because we're in this mode of being able to download things and hold on to them much more easily than we would in a, a normal waking state. So you can change the way that you think and feel about yourself and how you respond. And you can change your habits and your behaviors in a way that is gentle and very relaxing. You you do it basically, well, the way that I work with people mostly nowadays is with recordings and you will literally be lying in your bed, lying on your sofa with your eyes closed, really, really relaxed. Many people say that it's the most relaxing thing that you can do. And being able to make a change that lasts and has a profound impact on on how you think and feel. I honestly don't think, I can't think of anything better than that. I can't think of a better therapy, easier therapy than that, quite honestly. So, you know, the common side effects of hypnotherapy would be having better sleep, speaking to yourself more kindly, feeling more relaxed and present, feeling lighter, other people noticing a change in you. And so if that sounds interesting to you, I've just released a new collection of my favorite hypnotherapy recordings for you to download and keep. And you can grab those over at my website, karma-u.com forward slash collection. So it's karma-u.com forward slash collection to download the hypnotherapy collection and get started with making a transformation today. So last but not least, number five is to do with sleep. And it's to do with getting your unconscious mind to solve a problem for you while you sleep. So your unconscious is is basically an incredible problem solving machine. (laughs) And this actually I got from a book about creativity and It shared this technique as a way to come up with creative solutions, because as you sleep at night, your unconscious mind is working on your problems. It's working on finding solutions. And we just need to give it that suggestion and and ask the question very often to get clarity on something we might be struggling with or a creative idea that we need some help with, a decision we'd like to make, for example. So what I'm going to suggest you do is as you go to sleep tonight, to spend a couple of minutes focusing on and asking your unconscious mind, as strange as it sounds, asking your unconscious, so unconscious, I'd like you tonight to help me to find a solution to this problem that I've been having, or help me to come up with a decision for this big decision that I've been mulling over. 
And we're just asking that question. We're kind of making that suggestion that we'd like the unconscious to work on this while we sleep. And because your unconscious is a problem solving machine, when you wake up in the morning, having worked things through, it may very well be that you have the answers or the clarity that you need in the morning. And I I want you to try this. It sounds a little bit strange, but it does really work. So I'd like you to try this. And if you try it, and I'd love you, love you to share what you notice, you can send me a DM on Instagram. I'm at Chloe Brotherhood. I'd love to hear what you noticed about this. So there you have it. Those are my five ways to hack your unconscious mind for more calm and confidence or anything, in fact, that you want to use. I hope you found this useful. You can use any of this, these techniques yourself, or you can come and work with me in some capacity. I'd love to support you with making the changes that you want to in your life. And yeah, you can get started with hacking your unconscious mind with hypnotherapy with the ultimate hypnotherapy collection. I have 12 hypnotherapy sessions on there, four affirmations, MP3s for things like positivity, confidence, anxiety, resilience. And you can download all of that on my website, karmau.com forward slash collection. And I've popped that link in the show notes as well for you. So thank you so much for listening. Sending you loads of love. Good luck with everything. And I'll speak to you soon.